22. Where the upraised is Christ our Redeemer, where the upglory power and power, where the
will be number 648. 648. Brother Tony Valley will lead us in prayer after the singing of this song. 648. <coughs> church and the 
direction you would have it go. Lord, the best load, the blessings here just flow so abundantly. Lord, we pray for this country. We pray for our political leaders. Lord, we pray for our soldiers and those in harm's way, whether it be abroad or here at home. Lord, we pray that this country realizes that it needs you. It seems to want to turn a blind eye to the Lord. It's more and more every day, it seems to need to bow again and live. Lord, be with this country and help it come back to you. Lord, we know there are many that are on our, our prayer list. Many that are hurting, whether it be a, a medical hurt, a medical need, or a spiritual need. We pray you be with each and every one of them. And that you bring the healing that they need into their lives. But at the same time, help us remember our responsibilities too. Lord, be with us as we go to the service this morning. Lord, we, we so desire that everything that is said, we, we use it in a manner that not is only pleasing to you, but in a manner that will help change us in a positive way for you. Help this church and each and every member of it be the light, not just here in this neighborhood, but in our homes, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods. Wherever we go, let us be noticed as your church. Well, give us the strength and the wisdom and the courage for that. Well, give us the we pray. Amen.
641. Prosperity. 
and he didn't have to. He wasn't married. But he made it possible for us to be children of God. And so, yes, it is God's house. It is Christ's house. And through Him, and through His sacrifice, and through His death, you and I become a part of this great, great man. You know, this is a family so great, we're not going to know all our brothers and sisters in our lifetime. It's a family so great, that when we ultimately get to heaven, we're going to be making family members for the very first time. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful experience for us. First Timothy 3.15 emphasizes this, that you may know how you ought to behave yourself <coughs> in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground. So we're part of the household of God. That means we're living, breathing, active members of that. But the Bible uses another term. In fact, it is the most commonly used term in all the New Testament. We're called the body of Christ. Again, there's a reason for that. You and I carry out the work of Christ on the earth today. He's in heaven. So we become His mouth. We become His eyes, His ears, His hands, His shoulders, His feet. We are His people to do His work. Ephesians 5 and verse 30. For we are members of His body. But the Scriptures go further. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Just like we have a multitude of members in our physical body, so in this spiritual body we have a multitude of members. Look at the congregation of Kimball. We have all kinds of different talents and different abilities, different individuals who comprise this congregation. But we all are a part of the body of Christ together. <clears throat> Romans 12, verse 5. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. You notice the slight difference from 1 Corinthians 12 to Romans 12. We are members individually in 1 Corinthians 12. But in Romans 12, we're individually members of one another. We're a part of each other. We're connected to one another. In a strong metaphorical way, the blood of Jesus Christ courses through all of us to make us part of the body of Christ. That blood that He gave to bring about the forgiveness of our sins is that blood that goes through us and purifies us and cleanses us and gives us life in Him. And so we're not just individuals in the body of Christ out here doing our own thing. We are individuals who are a part of other individuals who are a part of one another who are a part of the body of Christ, who are carrying on His work. Ephesians 4 and verse 16, the Bible says, From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of the working by which every part does its share. Now in the Corinthian letter, there was a lot of jealousy going on. Some of them thought they were better than others because they had different talents, they had different abilities, they could do different things in the service of the Lord, and some were looking down on others. Let me just put it this way. There is no unimportant, 
unvaluable member of the body of Christ. There is no such creature. We all may not be doing the same thing. That's fine. That's good. That allows us to carry on more of the work of the Lord. But all of us, in our own way, because we have all been purchased by the blood of Christ, are important. No matter how small our contribution may be, no matter how large our contribution may be, we're part of the body of Christ, and that contribution is important. Every member of the body of Christ matters. That will make us feel good about who and what we are. But thirdly, the church is referred to as a temple. Why did Solomon build the temple? It was a place for God's presence to dwell. Well, guess what? That hasn't changed. Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. In whom the whole building, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a habitation of God in the Spirit. Just as that temple that Solomon originally built, or the temple that Zerubbabel rebuilt, had individual components to it, so the temple of God has those individual components in it. And as we become Christians, we become added to that temple. We become a part of that temple. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit dwells within you? Now, that should invoke two thoughts to us. Number one, again, it should make us feel quite special. Wow. I'm part of the temple of God. God dwells in me. But then, we need to think about the book of Ezekiel. As Judah became more and more and more and more wicked in the book of Ezekiel, we actually see the presence of God leave the most holy place and then leave the holy place and then leave the temple and actually leave the city of Jerusalem. They drove God away from themselves because of their sins. And so we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. So that brings up the second idea that we need to be a holy people so God's presence will remain with us. We want to be a holy temple. We want to be a temple that God can be happy to dwell within. Again, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you? Live up to it. Act like it. Be the temple of God. Be that holy dwelling place where God wants to be. And then finally, the church is an assembly. And that's interesting because the word ecclesia can mean the called out, but it can also mean an assembly as well. In Ephesians 3.21, to Him be glory in the church. And I think here, he is speaking of the assembly by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. And so when we assemble, we have a job. We have a purpose. We have a goal. That job, that purpose, that goal is to praise God. We put our whole hearts, we put our whole being into that. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people. Why? 
that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We know what it's like to be lost. We were all there at one time. We now know what it's like to be redeemed in the blood of Christ. And because of that, we praise the God who made that possible. And we praise Him with our whole being and our whole heart now. So as people hear our praise and honor and glory of God, they too will be drawn to Him. <coughs> Romans 15, 6 tells us something about this though. He says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when John tells us to turn the page, so and so and so and so. And we blend our voices backed by our hearts in praise of God. That's precisely part of the purpose we exist as Christians now. By the way, that's part of what we're going to do in heaven forever. Be able to blend our voices together. And the praise of God. So the church is not some institution out there. It's not some club. It's a living organism. Living for God. Name. That it might live with God forever. Maybe you're here today and you're not a part of the church. You're not a part of this living organism, but you would like to become so. If you would, if you believe on Christ with all your heart, if you're willing to repent of your sins and confess your faith in Him and wash away those sins in the waters of baptism, the Lord will add you to His church. But maybe you hear you once name the name of Christ. You've not been that holy temple that God needs you to be in the world. No better time no matter, to repent of your wrongs and ask God's forgiveness. So if you're here today and you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, let me encourage you to do something. Come as we stand.